Hi everyone, it's Alan here. And this video you clicked on today is going to be about credit cards and specifically the two credit cards I think everyone should have. If you hate credit cards, then look away now. And by the way, you've probably clicked on the wrong video. But for the rest of you, let's go. In my view, credit cards are useful for four main things. One, spending in foreign currencies. Number two, cash back or other types of rewards. Number three, helping you build a good credit score. And number four, delaying payment for things that you wanna buy. Let's mix it up and handle each of these in reverse order. So let's deal with extending the time before you have to pay for something first. Effectively here, I'm talking about balance transfers. Balance transfers between credit cards. So if you have big items of expenditure coming up, for example, then you could put that all on a credit card, then use a 0% credit card, a credit card that charges you 0% to transfer your balance over over, transfer that balance over to that credit card and then delay paying that bill off for a period of time at a 0% interest rate. So you only pay the minimum amount on that bill and don't pay interest on the balance. But again, that's for a short period of time. Now, I don't really like these kind of cards because the rules can differ between different types of cards. And if you miss that 0% deadline when the offer expires, then you can get charged a hell of a lot of interest, even if you are relatively disciplined. I know some people who have been able to avoid paying off a balance for months by shifting around between different cards. But I know more that have been caught out and ended up paying more interest as a result. A case of paying pounds to save pennies, not really a good idea. Idea. But I can see the case. If you need something urgently, you want three to six months to pay off, are super disciplined and are willing to put the reminders in your calendar that remind you when that 0% deal runs out, then I can see the case for some people, for those very few people in that camp. Credit cards can also help you build a good credit score. But why is building a good credit score important? It is likely that throughout your life, you are going to need some sort of credit. This could be for a mortgage, for a property. This could be for a good deal on your utility bills, your gas and electricity bills, for example, or even a mobile phone contract. One of the ways you can build up a good credit score is by using a credit card and show that you are using it responsibly. If over years, you can show that you are able to handle credit, use a credit card, paying off the bill, then this can build a good credit profile of you in the eye of lenders. Be wary of applying for too much credit at once though. For example, if you're applying for a mortgage right now, you might want to leave it a while before also applying for a credit card. Of course, use of credit cards can be dangerous, can be financially dangerous for you. So you've got to be responsible in their use. I've made it a rule in life from a very young age to never have a credit balance on a credit card. I pay it off in full every single month. Now, when I say very young age, I mean very young adult age, of course, because when I was a child, I was thinking about teddies and dolls and things like that. And anyway, I think I've veered off topic and revealed too much information. I only buy on a credit card if I can afford to pay off the bill in full at the end of the month. So why do I use a credit card at all, you may ask? Well, I use it for its benefits and specifically cash back in my case. Not for a credit score because I've built up an excellent credit score over the years. And by the way, I don't like that to get good credit, you've got to open yourself up to the risk of getting into debt. But c'est la vie, that's the world we live in. And I know I'm disciplined enough to mitigate against that risk, and I hope you are too. But back to my cashback cards or other types of reward cards. Now, this is where I maximize. I think everyone should have a cashback credit card. This is the type of credit card that, funnily enough, gives you cashback on all of your everyday purchases. So at the time I'm going to press, i.e. this video launching, my favorite card for cashback is the American Express Platinum Cashback Credit Card. This gives you 1% cashback on every purchase you make using it. Wherever I spend, I use my Amex if the retailer accepts it. Everything from thousands of pounds for a flight to a 50p banana, because it all adds up. In the last year, for example, I received a cashback rebate of nearly 435 pounds. The way I see it, if I'm gonna buy something and I'm gonna get a cashback rebate for it without doing anything extra, without any extra effort, then why the hell not? There are, of course, other types of cards that offer other types of rewards like vouchers or perks, or those that offer money off flight hotels or upgrades on flights or even access to airport lounges. I find these types of cards are quite difficult to assess for value. And whilst there are websites out there that can do some of that math for you, I prefer to keep things quite simple and not have to rely on maximizing the value of my points by transferring at the right time to some sort of airline reward scheme or something like that. With a cashback card, I know exactly what I'm getting, I'm happy with it, and it doesn't take any extra work on my part to achieve that benefit. I don't want to spend my time trying to figure out how much a point is worth, especially as that changes from time to time. There are times when you can boost your points and this can make a substantial difference to their value. But for me, this is not how I want to spend my time. I'm more than happy to take my cash back and then deciding how I want to spend that money rather than being fixed 
or restricted on how I can spend the points on a reward credit card. If I was a frequent flyer though, that view of mine might change. For example, I really like the idea of some cards offering access to airport lounges around the world, but these often come with hefty annual fees. And if I wanted to access those lounges, I can usually buy access for an equivalent price. Now, if I was flying five times a year or more, then this might be worth it, but I'm not, and so it's not worth it for me. As I said, I wanna keep things simple. I wanna put all of my spending on one credit card, get the cash back for it, and pay that bill off in full every single month. If left to chance, I know that any interest I get charged on a balance would dwarf the amount of cash back that I would be getting. So I ensure I have a direct debit in place to ensure that I pay the balance off in full every single month. Nothing is left to chance. This way, I treat my cashback credit card like a slightly delayed debit card. The final one on this list is about using a credit card to pay things off in a foreign currency or using a credit card abroad. Almost all credit cards, in my view, charge you excessively for using your card abroad and to pay for things in a foreign currency. There are two ways this happens typically. They give you a less favorable exchange rate and or they charge you a commission of typically two to 3% on your purchase. So let's say you're starting in the UK and going on holiday to India, for example, but the exchange rate on the day you want to buy something is one pound to 100 rupees. That's the spot exchange rate on the day. You're about to buy something with a price tag of 34,995 rupees. So in pounds, that should actually cost you, if you were going with the spot rate, 349 pounds and 95 pence. A pretty easy calculation, right? A bad credit card might offer you an exchange rate of one pound to 96 rupees. That same purchase would now cost you 364 pounds and 53 pence, or 14 pounds 58 more. Now a really bad credit card might still offer you the same poor exchange rate of one pound to 96 rupees, but they may also charge you a commission of say 2.75% on top of that, for the convenience of getting ripped off, of course. Now that same purchase would cost you 374 pounds and 55 pence, or 24 pounds 60 more. A specialist travel credit card, on the other hand, like the Halifax Clarity credit card, would charge you 0% commission and offer you the same spot exchange rate that is available to them. So no commission and no unfavorable FX exchange rate. So that 34,995 rupees purchase will cost you what it should, 349 pounds and 95 pence. This is a quick 10 second detour to get you to subscribe to the channel. It's free and well, why not? Okay, that was just six seconds. Quickly, let me just tell you to also do... Now, of course, you came to this video because you wanted to know what the two credit cards are that I think everyone should have. If you've made it this far in the video, it won't surprise you to know what those two are. Number one would be a cashback credit card. Get one paying as much cashback as possible. And number two, a specialist travel credit card. The cashback on everyday spending is free money if you're using it properly. And the specialist travel credit card is also a no-brainer for overseas spending on a credit card. And even for foreign currency spending that you might be doing from home. Now, I've already mentioned a couple of the cards I use, but rather than mention them again here, I'll put links to them in the show notes below. As when you watch this video, those particular cards might not be around. And as you'd expect, some of these best deals change over time. I'll keep updating the notes whenever I see a new card come up that I think you should know about. So do save the video for later and check back in on the comments from time to time. Having said all that, there are a few very important things to bear in mind. Credit card companies are not in the business of offering you something for nothing. The best cards I've mentioned above usually don't come with the lowest interest rates. I never fall into this trap because I ensure I pay the full balance on my credit card off every single month. If you're not confident that you'll be able to pay the balance off in full every single month, then I'd search for a lower interest credit card instead and prioritize that over any type of rewards or travel benefits. Credit card debt is amongst the worst types of consumer debt that you can get yourself into. So you have to be really confident that you're going to be able to manage your credit card well. And again, I'm gonna mention it for the nth time on this video, ensure that you pay your balance off in full every single month. If you can't do that, credit cards are probably not for you. Some credit cards will come with an annual fee. You should figure out whether it's worth paying that annual fee at all. For example, my cashback credit card, there is a version of it without a fee and there is a version of it with a fee, with a very small fee mind. I pay the very small fee because going with the no fee option would overall over a year generate me less cashback given my current expenditure on it than my fee paying one does. So I've made a conscious choice to pay that fee I've done the sums and figured out one is better than the other. Don't just be tempted to pay an annual fee just because the benefits that it offers actually make the annual fee valuable. Figure out whether that benefit is of use to you. Are you going to use it? Because if you're not gonna use it, then that annual fee is payment for nothing. A lot of people fall into the trap of wanting airport lounge access, for example, all over the world, 
but they travel on average once or maybe twice a year. And so whilst it sounds great, it's a poor value for money choice. One more thing, don't ever be tempted to withdraw cash from a credit card. If you're thinking, I've got a cashback credit card, I'll withdraw a whole bunch of cash now, earn the cash back on it, and then pay off the balance of that credit card in full at the end of the month, then you'd be wrong. What will happen instead is you'll incur interest on that cash withdrawal from the moment you withdraw it, and you're probably gonna incur a cash advance fee on top of that. As I said, credit card companies aren't in the habit of giving you benefits for nothing in return. To add insult to injury, cash withdrawals don't typically attract cash back anyway. So you'll really just be throwing your money down the drain. If you need cash, use a debit card for withdrawals, never a credit card. Also remember about the impact of applying for too much credit at the same time. That can have a detrimental impact on your credit score. And above all, always do your own research and don't treat this video as financial advice. It is not meant to be and it's for educational purposes only. I hope that's been helpful for you. And if it has, please like, share and subscribe and comment below on what credit cards you like and why. And I'll see you on the next one.